and welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Decades Challenge. The year is now 1324. Last year we had a string of good luck with eight birthday sims surviving out of eight. Daisy gave birth to twins, but we unfortunately lost one of them. Rosemary has begun a new relationship, and so has Adriana. This year, we have Romarin's toddler role to do, so we are going to be heading off to our main household in just a moment. Today I wanted to start off in the Revere's household because, as you saw in the intro, Tobias is back from Willow Creek after having received a letter from Miriam informing him of his father's death and of her suspicions regarding Lucan's role in his death. Upon arriving in Henford, Tobias asked around and everything indeed seems to be pointing toward his brother who attempted to brush everything off and lie his way out. Tobias is no longer the naive young man he once was, and he no longer believes anything coming out of his evil brother's mouth. And so, Lucan has just lost a duel against his brother. I was not able to find the animations I need to show the rest of the story, so I am just going to have to tell you. Tobias is a good sim, and he simply wanted to defeat his brother and force him to admit what he's done. He had no intention of physically harming him, he just wants him to come clean and repent, and he might just want to embarrass him a little. And so, after winning, Tobias foolishly turned his back on Lucan, and Lucan took advantage of that to attempt to kill his brother. Unfortunately for Lucan, Tobias is now the better swordsman, and as he tries to defend himself, he mortally wounds his brother. You might ask me, but why? Why would you kill Gemma's soulmate like this? And that, my friends, is because I did his birthday roll off screen and he actually failed it. I rolled off screen because I'd like to start doing side household rolls off screen from now on, but of course this happened. So here we are with Lucan, who has just been wounded. This is absolutely not what Tobias had intended. And so I am going to get August and Gisling over here. Oh, even the horse came to see what happened. And um, I am going to get Giselin to plead for him just because I think that's what he would do. Although I feel like Lucan's time is up story-wise. What's he up to? Wis witness death, yes. Come on over. Oh, he's dazed. Dazed from losing another parent. Giselin mourns the death of one more parent, feeling much more alone in the world. Whether one loves or hates one's parents, they are life constant and undeniable truth until they are gone, redefining the world by their absence. That's so sad and well written. I feel like Lucan keeps going to mourn Gemma and Julien and he even got the gloomy trade from everything that happened. So it just seems to me like he's ready to give up and move on now that August is grown and he can take care of himself and his brother. But well... Does Whale have a better chance than just pleading? I'll try it. So stop witnessing and go plead for your papa. So I won't be too upset if it doesn't work. This is really entirely for Ghislaine's benefit. <gasps> really? <gasps> uh, I'm still alive? Oh, I am. I guess you saved me, huh? Thank you so much. Seriously, yikes, that was close. I owe you big time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. And Lucan rises from the dead. All right. Well, Tobias must be the really relieved one here because he was not intending to become a murderer today. So I don't know. Does this mean the two brothers might actually find some common ground after this. I mean, Lucan might be upset that his brother almost killed him, but he's the one who, uh, no. But yeah, Lucan is the one who tried to kill Tobias first. So it's kind of Lucan's bad in this situation. And oh, Tobias is feeling angry and he's feeling happy from having a brush with death. And he's going to speak to his son. So you know what? I am going to have him express love and hold his little kiddo. It's okay, Miriam. You can stop crying now. Especially because this is sort of all your fault. I mean, no, it's clearly Lucan's fault, but Miriam is the one who put the gears in motion. Witnessing death of a friend. Is he, though? He's not really his friend. Her friend. 
Is the horse crying? The horse is crying. <laughs> That's so sad. I didn't know the horses could cry. Oh. Let's go cheer him up. Because this is Lucan's horse, actually. Well, I think it's a mare, actually. Yeah, it's a mare. Here, I'm gonna have Lucan come and take care of his poor horse. Oh my. So, I hope after all of this, Lucan and Tobias are going to try and mend their relationship. I don't know. I'm not sure how I would feel if I had just had a brush with death. Okay, horsey, you can stop crying now so that we can cheer you up. He just keeps crying. It's too sad. I, 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 I can't keep looking at this. We're gonna go take a look at August, who's about to pee himself. And we are going to do his marriage roll, which I completely forgot to do in the previous episode. So if I remember this correctly, we have to roll a d20 to see if he gets married. 18 he does, and then we roll a d12 to see how many baby tries he gets. Two. Of course it's just two. The challenge does not want Gemma's line to survive. It just doesn't. <sighs> I may veto this eventually for Ghislaine, just because... Does Ghislaine like affection? Sure. Uh, just because I would like to get to a point in the challenge where our three lines are going to keep surviving at least for a while, I was hoping that we could have one survivor of each line go to the new world when we get there. Mason Carver. All right, Lucan had a... Um, I think Safi Moreau is pretty cute. Uh, no... You guys aren't even in the same country. But yeah, eventually, uh, when the families start going to America, I would like to send one representative of uh, each of the three lines. Okay, you guys can you guys can really just get over it. I think I might have to reset the horse. There we go. Oh no, he's still crying. Tobias is still pretty sad as well. Marie Moreau, leave us alone. Can't you see? We're busy with our own drama here. Uh, he's feeling pretty sad. I think he feels terrible about what happened. He is hot-headed, but he's also proper, so I think maybe the situation just got away from him. I mean, Lucan did cause his father's death, right? But I think as a good sim, Tobias did not want things to escalate this badly, and so he is probably going to be the one who is going to try to mend things, even though... Technically, Lucan is the one who's mostly in the wrong. If you guys are wondering who this little girl here is, she is Gamal's daughter. She's the servant's daughter, so she's just sort of chilling around with them while they're eating. And of course, Lucan came to eat pudding with them. All right, so that was all I wanted to do in this household. So I'm pretty surprised that Lucan survived, but, um, well, at least, why is he flirty? Ready for some action. Okay, it's fine. Uh, so before any odd woohoo starts happening, I am going to head on to our main household. All right, we are back with our main household. And of course, Fatima is still feeling flirty. Most of the people in the comments in the last episode mentioned that they agreed that three woohoos a day did make sense. So I am going to have them have a little woohoo right away. And then we are going to do Romarin's roll. The other thing that I'd like to get done this year is Gabriella's wedding. So we are going to be heading off to see her in just a moment. I'm gonna get a few chores done so that we can keep making some money and then we're gonna do the roll. Oh goodness, I almost forgot. Uh, tomorrow is actually harvest day so should we do the harvest first or should we do Gabriella's wedding first? I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest right away just so that I don't forget about it. All right, so these two are done. I am going to have Brayden come and take care of his little baby. And meanwhile, we are going to have Fatima come and do a pregnancy test. And Fatima is not pregnant, so I might have them do another woohoo a bit later in the day, but for now, we are going to take a picture of this beautiful little moment before we roll to see if Romarin is going to be making it to the taller stage or not. To make it to the taller life stage, he needs to avoid a 4, an 8, and a 12. 
Oh, thank goodness. Okay, baby Romarin survives. That's Daddy. wonderful. I'm so happy. Daddy. Thank goodness we have Daddy. an heir at least. Even if Fatima is not having much success in giving us a spare, at least our cutie Romarin is healthy and well. All right, so he was sunny. He is now slow to warm up. It's challenging to take care of these toddlers because they have slower attention, need decay, slightly negative moods, and build relationships slowly. However, they don't have negative reactions when they don't get enough attention. Oh, huh, okay. And movement developmental delay. These toddlers build movement skills slowly. I feel like that's not really a personality trait though. So I might just remove it because I feel it's, ju it's just sort of making gameplay more difficult and it doesn't really add anything to him as a character. So he's slow to warm up. What else? He was sunny. So maybe we, I just saw carefree here. Slower needs and learn the potty skill quickly. Okay, let's go with that. Oh, the hair. <laughs> he's so cute. <laughs> Let's take a look at this little guy. Oh, he lost his freckles. Oh no, they're still there. Okay. <laughs> it's such a funny hairstyle. I, I think I'm gonna leave it just because it's kind of cute. He looks like that villain in Shrek though, but I mean, I think it's period appropriate. So I'm gonna leave it. I just, I might take him into cast just to give him an outfit though. All right, so here is Ramarin after a very small makeover. I changed his freckles just because they weren't very visible on his darker skin color. I also changed his eyebrows and I gave him a unique little outfit that the other toddlers don't have. I also left him with the ridiculous hairstyle just because it kind of reminds me of Quentin. So I think it's, it's just sort of funny. He's cute. All right, so now that that is done, I didn't actually have time to get started on the harvest, but we still have quite a bit of time left. We have another entire day, so I'm actually going to head on right away to Gabriella so that we can get her and Corey married. All right, so here we are at a little cottage that was abandoned out in the woods. And this served as a sort of hideout for the outlaws for the past few years. So Corey has set things up so that the two of them can live here once they're married. They even have this makeshift baby furniture that Corey probably made. They've got mismatched dining chairs and basically everything is very homemade, you know? But... Gabriella is here visiting and I think she couldn't be happier as long as she is <gasps> pregnant second trimester already? Really? She she's barely showing. Well, <laughs> uh one more reason to elope. I mean, from what I've heard, as long as a couple got married before the baby was born, people just sort of tolerated women being pregnant before marriage so it might not be as big a deal as I think but I still think that Gabriella and Corey they're quiet people they're simple people they're not going to make a big event out of it so I'm just going to invite over our outlaws and of course I am also going to invite over our dear friend Noah and they are going to be the only people here to witness the wedding all right, so all of our outlaws are already here, and I couldn't resist the temptation of also inviting good old Adriana. See, even Noah's happy to see her. So Noah being bad-natured, I think he does not care at all that Gabriella's marrying into an outlaw family, and he's probably even already friends with these guys, if I'm being honest. So oh, Corey wants to get married to Gabriella and she wants to woohoo with Corey. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get these mar these guys married right away. So Graves is Harlan's last name, but I think I'm going to find a new name for them. I'm not sure what it's going to be. Maybe something inspired from... Oh, 
Well, would you look at this? The ceremony is actually working. Well, here we go. Gabriella and Corey and... Look at Grayson hanging out in the back. You know he's jealous, right? So could you imagine that Grayson heard that Adriana was going out and he followed her here just to see who she was hanging out with? He might even see the outlaws and be extremely upset. Aw. Nobody's even watching. There we go. This is just too cute. There we go. They're now married. Oh, and they just had their very first kiss. They woohooed like 70 times already, but first kiss. And now they both want to woohoo, so... Okay, I thought they were going to do it autonomously. I am going to have them woohoo just to get their wants fulfilled. Oh, she wants to be friendly with her nephew, Kaylin. All right, so Adriana is here. I'm actually going to control her while these two are off um, consummating their marriage. And I'm going to have her introduce herself to the outlaws. And why is Tobias here? I've got a special gift for you because you're such a good neighbor and I appreciate your kind... What is this? It's like Tobias heard <laughs> that there was a wedding, like a secret wedding out in the woods and he decided to go and say like, oh, congratulations, here's a gift for you guys to settle in. Like maybe this is on his family's land or something. I don't know. Are they sort of stuck here? She want She's going to be yelled at by Noah. Maybe not. Okay, so for some reason she needs to introduce herself to Harlan again. Oh, Lavender. I forgot Adriana knows that she's the one who attacked her brother. Uh-oh. Well, it has been years and she probably doesn't want to ruin Gabriella's wedding day, so she might not actually do anything now. Could you guys maybe move somewhere else? Uh, Gabriella got a special gift from Tobias. Uncommon plants. Really? Oh. Uh, oh, well, that's one way of doing it. You guys are absolutely ridiculous. Would you please just move from the door? Uh, she got black beans. Okay. I don't know if black beans were a thing in medieval England. I have a feeling they probably weren't. Ready to fight their enemies or any sims they dislike. Oh, man. Oh, seeing a scary sim. That's, uh, that's actually Harlan. She's ready to fight. Oh, boy. Should she? I mean, that might not make a very good impression on Harlan. Mess around. No, I don't think so. But like I said, she might not want to make a scene at Gabriella's wedding. Although, she is impulsive, so... I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh. The outlaws are already leaving. Well, okay, that's fine. I just wanted Adriana to get another chance to meet them since apparently their relationship got culled or something. Oh, she's scared of him. Maybe he, she thinks he's imposing and, well, he is scarred and he does look a little scary. Oh, everybody's leaving. Okay, then. Uh, did someone steal our crib? Did, is that a thing? Did it bug out or did someone steal the crib? That's so weird. Why would you steal a crib? Oh man. You might notice that the amount of money that they have down here is exactly the amount that Brayden owed them for her dowry or her inheritance. And so I imagine Gabriella probably told him of her intentions to get married and he probably wasn't very impressed but seeing as she was pregnant he couldn't really say no but he probably also asked her like did you ask for permission did you go see the lord you know he should have told me before you got pregnant so that i could go and and talk to him and she's probably just like what did i need to ask permission so brayden probably isn't all that proud of the situation and I don't think the Lord has much of a reason to be against it but he might hold this over them if something ever happens and he needs a favor he might say well you know one of your family members to get married without my authorization and I just sort of let it go so um maybe Brayden is going to owe him a favor at some point she wants to be friendly with Sir Lucan come on Oh, she was friends with August, though, wasn't she? When he was a kid, she hung out with him a bit. Yeah, so she's great friends with August, so that's fun. 
that's a relationship at some point that we could bring back if she needs a favor or if she's looking for protection a gist might be able to help her now that he's a grown boy all right so she's already in her second trimester and so she is not going to be giving birth in this episode but we're probably going to have a new baby in the next episode in this family so now that it's done and that it's the evening i am going to head on back to our main household so that we can do the harvest all right we are back with our main household and i am going to remove gabriella's dowry from our household funds there we go so we've got one more dowry out of the way We've only got five more kids whose inheritance we have to pay, and then we're going to start paying back Quinton. Oh dear, I forgot. I also got the bills earlier today, so I'm going to have to go pay that as well. Let's see how bad the bills are. Huh. Since I was in another family, did it autonomously pay the bills? Did it just skip over them? I wouldn't mind because it would be 3,000 bucks that we, um, I sure would like to keep in our household funds. All right. Okay, so Adriana is just back. Cosmo has been sprayed by a skunk. Gross. Great. Poor cat. Look at these goats sleeping in Adriana's bedroom. That's so cute. It's like they know she's the one mainly taking care of them and she's the animal enthusiast. Oh gosh, this poor sick cat. He looks like he passed out next to the fire. Did he just pee on the floor? Why is someone visiting us at 1am? Oh, this is Fatima's half-brother. But why is he here at 1am? I mean, this is kind of a funny coincidence because for the next episode, what I had planned is um, Quentin's wedding. So I don't know if this is his brother come over to give us the Wait, wedding invitation, yeah, but it could have oh, waited until morning. I guess I'll have them have a conversation. Maybe she's going to ask him about who Quentin intends to marry because it kind of comes as a surprise to her that Quentin was courting someone at all. And uh, Rowan is probably going to let her know that um, Quentin actually fell in love at first sight. And this is this is actually true. I was setting up Quentin's family to have him get married soon. And he fell in love at first sight with the sim that I intended for him to marry. So at least one of my sims is going to have a happy ending with their soulmate. No, that's not true. Gabriella and Corey are also having a happy ending, but it it was unexpected. Whereas for Quentin, things fell into place just perfectly. So I don't know if Fatima is going to be a little worried about that. Although she does have her own soulmate, so she's probably maybe a little jealous, but also happy for him. Uh, okay, well, bye now. I'm just going to send her back to sleep in that case. Oh, the poor sick cat. What am I going to do with him? So it looks like Rowan actually stayed overnight. I don't know if he got in trouble somewhere and that's why he ended up showing up at 1 a.m. because he needed somewhere to crash. <laughs> Once again, Adriana is out here at 5 a.m. doing all of the chores while her brother is blissfully sleeping. Oh my god, the cat just passed out. The poor thing. What? Wait a minute. Oh no! Oh, Rosemary is pregnant! And she just peed herself, but she's pregnant! I was sure it wouldn't happen. Oh no, now we have to get her married. Oh, she wants to get engaged to the ghost of her, her husband. Oh no. All right, <laughs> Rowan, I should really get going now. Yeah, <laughs> you just saw the poor woman pee herself. Okay, so I just took a look at my spreadsheet and it turns out that Rosemary is actually still a young adult. She is 40 right now and she only swaps into the next category. Uh, sure. She only changes into the next category, so that's to say adult where the pregnancy percentage chance is lower. So right now, she actually has just as much chance as Fatima of getting pregnant. So of course, she got pregnant with one woohoo, but Fatima can't manage to get pregnant with like 10 of them. I've got Adriana out here harvesting all of our crops. And meanwhile, I've got Fatima working on spinning some thread. I am going to have our young Esther come and take care of the animals 
And then I think we're going to invite a few people over because to celebrate the harvest, we do have a goal of inviting guests and party spirit. Oh man, I really can't believe Rosemary is pregnant. You better be embarrassed, Rosemary. I guess during the harvest party, we're going to have Hubert show up and propose to her. And we are going, I don't know if we're going to move her into a household with him or if he should just move into the household with her over in Kaylin's house. I'm happy to say that our money situation is sort of under control. So it's not going to... Uh, oh, he's coming to get one of the chickens, isn't he? Oh, uh, goodbye, little chicken. It was nice knowing you. Oh, Esther was coming to go and put a hatchable egg in the coop, and I guess she just saw death and ran away. By the way, I also want to say a big thank you to Plumbobs in the past, who mentioned in the comments of the last episode that I can get treats to heal our pets in the apothecary cabinet by Nanak, which I had completely forgotten about. And so we are going to have Adriana come and get a treat for our poor Mr. Wiggles. Okay, they just need a lot of space to be able to use it. Wonderful. So we are going to take, I guess it's a wellness treat. Poop randomizer. I almost want to try it. Oh no, our bills. So I guess the Lord didn't forget about our bills after all. Oh, hey Harlan. Maybe I should get Adriana to come say hello. I know she was supposed to go heal the cat, but priorities, right? Maybe she just saw him walking past the house and recognized him from Gabriella's wedding and went over to ask him if he has any news from Gabriella, you know, about the pregnancy. Is everything going well? We are the next day, so it could have been a few months since Gabriella got married. So she's just going to ask him how everything is. I'm going to have her ask him to... Oh, uh, he is practical. Okay. I think I'm going to ask him to hang out. Maybe um, they're going to have a little harvest party and she's going to ask if he wants to join them. She's still afraid of him. I mean, maybe she thinks it's a little bit thrilling. Uh, Adriana doesn't enjoy interacting with a barely known individual that spikes up her weirdo meter. Uh, um, who are you and why are you dressed as Rosemary? And oh! Look who's here. It's Hubert, Rosemary's baby daddy. A child on the way. Second trimester in seven hours. Great. All right. Well, we're going to have Rosemary come and ask him to hang out. All right. Okay. So these guys are having a good conversation after all. So I'm going to let them interact a little. And I'm going to go back to managing the rest of the family. Look at Sheila, who just showed up here out of nowhere. Right, okay, so while we have Hubert here, let's talk about marriage. And uh, we are going to have to get them engaged, and we don't know each other enough. I like how the goats keep congregating around Adriana. So these two are chatting. Everything seems to be going just fine. So she is getting along with this... Um, Outlaw leader here. I'm sure Adriana would love that this would make her brother very angry. Oh, look at him. He's over there watching them. I've got my eye on you. Okay, so these two have enough relationship now. Oh, great. He's tense. Watch him refuse her. I don't know what I'm going to do if he says no. Why is the witch visiting us? Uh, I'm going to have her share the big news. And let's take a look at what his reaction is. Oh dear. Yeah, he is not happy. That's awkward. Let's still propose, because even if he's not super happy about her being pregnant, especially at their age, I think he would at least do the decent thing and get married so that she doesn't get into any trouble. All right, there we go. Okay, so there is one thing that was resolved. So we might actually have two weddings in the next episode. We'll have Quentin and we'll have Rosemary. Fatima had a want to woohoo with Brayden, so I did have them have a little shower woohoo. 
So I am going to have her take a pregnancy test and then we're going to go and spin some more thread to get our money up. All right, I still have to go pay the bills. Man, Brayden does not look happy to be paying the bills. Goodbye, sweet money. Adriana's phone? Hey, Adriana, we're having a little get together before prom. Want to join? Well, why not? I can very much see Adriana ditching her family at the Harvest Festival to go and chill with some fellow teens. So, who do we have here? Okay, this is Mariana Branson over here. She is the person that I have planned to marry Adriana's cousin, Vasco, who is going to inherit the bakery. And this is Sigurd Kidner. So this is a sim from the gallery made by Dorksum123, like a few of the Kidner characters that we have. And, oh, Eleonora. Jeez. We all remember Eleonora, who had an illegitimate baby with Brayden's twin brother, Frederick. And of course, she senses a flirty atmosphere. Impulsive sims lack control of their desires. So I don't know at what time these guys are actually going to go off for prom, but um, I might as well invite a bunch of more teens over and uh, see Adriana interact with them a bit. So I don't know what happened, but everybody just left. And the only person who's left here is Eleonora. Let's have Adriana maybe get to know her a little. I could imagine Adriana being a little... Oh. Who's she inviting? Oh, Grayson. Right, I invited Grayson. Well, while we're here, we could try and find... Oh, there's baby Sabrina. Frederick's little girl. I could see Adriana being a little curious to see her niece. Kaylin and Grayson just showed up, and I wonder if Grayson might have a little conversation with Adriana about seeing her with the outlaws at Gabriella's wedding, which I don't think she would be very happy to hear, because I don't think she knew that she was being followed. Oh, let's see her get introduced to Sabrina first. Oh, cutie. And she literally can't say a single thing. Uh, hold hands while she's holding the baby? Mess around? Wait a second. Wait. Travel to prom? Oh no. Uh, he, he just invited her to mess around. Oh my gosh. Uh, should I cancel it? I kind of don't want to. I mean, she is impulsive, so it does seem like the sort of thing she would do. I just hope she won't get pregnant. If she does, maybe she's going to ask him to get married and he'll say no and she'll end up in trouble and she'll ask Harlan for help? I don't know. But she's doing it with the baby in her arms. No! No! Drop that baby! Oh god. How awkward. What, what's happening? We got the woohoo music, but... Uh... Well, oh. Does she have a scar? I think she has a scar. Well, I have no clue if that worked or if it didn't. Can I do a pregnancy test? I can't, so it apparently bugged out because she had the kid in her arms, which she can no longer put down, which um, could be a problem. It seems like we're going to have to go back home with the kid in her- uh, She doesn't even have an action cue. What's happening? <laughs> Adriana, you're all broken. <laughs> Okay, I reset her, and uh, we're gonna head on home before anything else happens. Oh, uh, and I, I just realized Osbert is here. He was her great friend when they were kids, and he grew up, and now he's he's become a tailor, and he's a teen. Anyways, we're gonna go home, and she's gonna go join her family's gathering instead. Alright, so I invited a bunch of sims over to celebrate the harvest, including Grayson, who... Well, let's just say there was a really chaotic encounter that we had over at Eleonora's place. So I am still going to have her and Grayson have a little argument. Just to say that she didn't like him following her to Gabriella's wedding and that she is old enough to know what she's doing and she doesn't need him looking out for her. 
Let's there you go. In front of everyone. That's not embarrassing at all. And yeah, that's it. I'm not going to have them get into a much bigger argument. Just a little argument. Oh, everybody just celebrating together. I love that Eleonora followed them here. That's that's not awkward at all. It is the end of the day, so I am going to leave this part here. We had a bit of a rocky start with Lucan being killed, but he managed to survive thanks to Shislaine pleading with the Grim Reaper. We also had a successful wedding between Gabriella and Cory, and we now have Rosemary, who is pregnant and engaged, although I could have done without the pregnancy. In the next part, we are going to have two weddings. Rosemary will be marrying Hubert, and we are going to attend the wedding of Brayden's best friend, Quentin. I expect we'll also have two births since Rosemary and Gabriella are both pregnant, but unfortunately Fatima still is not, so we are not going to be having any babies in our main household for now. So once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.